nature actually has a lot to offer. Uh, there's a few hundred million years of history of development of materials that uh, nature has evolved. Some of the projects in my lab actually involve using inspiration from nature to make nano-sized materials. As you know right now, we have a lot of issues in our society. There's energy crisis, there's environmental issues right now, and uh, the work that I do actually focuses on uh, assessing and trying to uh, solve both issues. So in my laboratory, uh, we have a different number of different projects. Some of them involve uh, making more efficient energy conversion systems like sensitized solar cells. Uh, we're also uh, working with lithium-ion batteries for energy storage. Um, and then, of course, we're trying to treat polluted waters uh, using photocatalysis. One species that we study is the California red abalone. And so we study this organism because it's made of a very weak, inherently weak material, uh, calcium carbonate, and yet nature has nano provided a nanostructure, or built a nanostructure, uh, that gives it an incredible toughness. What we're inspired by is how does this abalone control the crystals inside its structure, and can we utilize the same strategy, for example, to make materials like this, so this is just these are actually made of titanium dioxide and they're membranes, uh, so they're porous in nature. And what we're trying to do, for example, is use these porous membranes uh, to uh, actively treat um, water that's polluted. To, to give you a little more insight about what's interesting about nature, why it's, it provides us with so many clues is, Garrett's studying a system that actually has fractures inside it. It has defects inside its structure, but actually that's advantageous in nature. You know, the current technology, what people do right now to make composites is make it as flawless as possible. But actually, in fact, nature is already flawed and that actually improves its mechanical properties. I like working at UCR because I have very uh, motivated and excited students that come actually from a broad diversity uh, of backgrounds. And actually that's very important because when you're coming up with creative ideas to uh, develop new nanotechnologies, uh, having people that come from different walks of life actually brings in a new way of looking at things, and I think that's the unique part of uh, working at UCR. My goal, of course, is to try and inspire them and excite them about the research that they're doing. I feel that having undergraduates actually see and breathe real nanotechnology in the laboratory will really open their eyes to what their careers are all about and hopefully inspire them and motivate them to go even further.